Hey guys, Sabadiah here. <coughs> oh fuck my nose. Right. <clears throat> Let's get straight into the comments. Silver Raptor is invading the video again with a few more useful tips. Let's see what he's got this time. You can use a pot of tainted water and add the ingredients for the soup slash stew to it, and it'll be fine because the water will purify as you cook the soup slash stew anyways. Oh <laughs> wait, for real? Right, let me get some tainted water. I summon rain! <laughs> Okay, I got the tainted water. Just add the ingredients in and moment of truth. <laughs> ah, it actually worked. Right, what you got for us next? When watching the various Life and Living channel shows for free XP, you can watch the same episodes on collected VHS tapes and get the experience from them for even more free XP. Yeah, this one's a classic. I think I mentioned this one in one of the previous episodes. It's not a choice between one or the other, because you can have both if you really want to. When searching a house for zombies, there's a safe way to verify if a zombie is on the other side. If you go to a closed door and rapidly open close it, even if the zombie is actively hitting the door, you can close it safely before the zombie gets out. I subconsciously do this so often. Pretty sure I did it within this series, I'm surprised I've never mentioned it. It's like a very shitty martial art. Simple, but useful. And lastly, if you open the windows of the car while driving, you can use the aim feature you normally use to fight zombies or look far away in the car as well. You can use that to see further ahead of you in the car and give yourself better reaction time if you see things in front of you. Now this one I'm genuinely surprised by, because I've always had a problem with not being able to see far in front of me while driving, yet all I had to do was roll down a window. Thank you Silver Raptor for all of these. Your track record with providing useful tips and tricks to all of us is pure reliability. Cool Rover says, here's a tip, you can have a two-handed weapon and a duffel bag in your secondary as long as the two-handed weapon, or the one on your back, is equipped in your primary slot instead of both hands. This way the fire axe, in your case, will be used one-handed. This I actually knew about but I avoid it quite often mainly because I find it to be very situational or based on personal preference slash playstyle. If you really need to hold that duffel bag in your secondary slot, you can use a double-handed weapon with just one hand. However, it will result in less damage in exchange. So maybe use this one sparingly and cautiously. Still a good tip, nonetheless, for a mechanic that's not well known. And lastly, Justin has left us with a wall of text here, so I'll pick out a few tips from it and you guys can pause the video and read through all of it if you so wish. If you need to gain weight fast, I myself don't recommend you inhaling an entire bottle of olive oil, or butter, as I've heard people do, because firstly, that's gross to think about, and it's really not worth it when you basically become depressed from it. Uh, fair point, fair point. I would recommend finding ice cream cereal or bourbon, as all of these are packed with calories. Very true. If you go underweight, keep an eye out for ice cream in the residential fridge freezers, as that is the best fattening food. You can also very often find it in the box freezers within shops and fuel stations. But if the gods are angry at you, and you somehow don't manage to find any ice cream, cereal, or bourbon, you know that you can also absorb a bottle of olive oil as a last-ditch effort. If you stand next to your car and press V, you can bring up the radial menu, and that's all I need to read from that one. People, use the radial menu when doing anything with cars. It makes life so much more easier. Full points for this tip. And to finish off, spoons or forks can just be kept in your main inventory, and your character will use it when they eat. You don't have to equip it. Okay, good to know I don't have to equip the cutlery to use it. I had issues with showcasing this a few episodes back, so if you have either of these and the food has the animation available, it will play when consuming the said food. Thank you everyone for all of these awesome tips and tricks. The next episode will be the last one, so if any of you have any more amazing knowledge hidden up your sleeves and you would like to share it with us one last time, definitely leave it in the comments below. And as always, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a like, and if you would like to see more and catch up with all of my latest content, make sure to subscribe. Now then, let's start with day 6. We in this bitch, gonna get crunk, Abraz on fleek, the fuck. Hey guys, welcome back. Don't mind me, I'm just... Uh, uh. <laughs> I'm just doing a few squats, you know, you know, gotta work out them cheeks sometimes. Cause come on, bro, L look, look at those cushions, look at that. 
Ooh. Right everyone, welcome back. We're gonna be picking up exactly where we left off in the last episode, and that is searching for the generator, because we've <laughs> we've not been able to find one in the last episode. And also, I want to correct a little mistake. I said that we were looking for a wrench, which that is correct, except the one that we found in the last episode was actually a wrench for cars. What we are looking for is this a pipe wrench so hopefully we'll be able to find one i'm gonna be keeping an eye on it it's not too rare so we should be able to find it while we are looking for the generator but if we don't then we are definitely cursed by some evil entity right then let's go through the plan so if you look we are currently here this right here that's us so the plan is for us to slowly head out back this way and back into the area where we need to be right here then from here we're gonna slowly make our way down to the beginning point which is here and from there we are going to make our way through the garages of this place we should be able to find a generator hopefully we've been in some of these garages before but not all of them so i do want to check through all of them maybe we'll bump into one if we don't we are then going to continue going down this way through all of these and if we still don't find any then then we're gonna continue going through these ones all the way to the last one down here now just for reference we left our car somewhere in this area here so if we still don't find a generator after going through all those places we are gonna go back into our car we are going to go back into our base and if you can see there is some garages here which also have a chance of spawning the generator the only issue is that they are locked however we do have a crowbar and an axe so what we're gonna do is we're just gonna attempt to bash them down because boys i am desperate for a generator now it is essentially almost the last thing that we need in order to completely get set up with our first week. Right, let's get our backpack and let's begin on the adventure. Ooh, foggy day outside. It's actually very pretty. It's so atmospheric. I love it. Ooh, we got a zombie over here already. Hey, yo, no, no. No touching. No touching. Just a laceration. Right, let's just sterilize that. Oh, what a great start to an episode, isn't it? Almost got bit right there and then. Need to get some better control on my aiming. Ooh, we got another one coming from the forest. Right, I'm not making the same mistake with you. Come on, buddy. There you are. Filth absolute gremlin right so according to my calculations according to all the equations we need to head up this way Ooh, there was a zombie in that house but that's all right we don't really care for that not gonna take too much unnecessary risk if i don't have to Ooh, some some leftovers over there they're all stomped someone was obviously making wine right we're almost at the beginning point yeah here it is now then let's begin so nothing in here but let's just have a look yeah there it is there is the wrench that we actually have and the one that we whoa machete it's in a sh condition though we do have another crowbar i'm gonna take it mainly because i've got the space for it and uh you know you can never have too many crowbars you know i just i just love oh, prying things open <laughs> now then you are locked that's not good so this is where the crowbar should come in quite handy i think there should be an option to pry it open with a crowbar i mean there probably is a mod for it but you know we ain't got it so if you do have a mod like that then it, this should make it a lot easier but for me i'm just gonna have to make a lot of noise and hope for the best hey we're in there's no generator. Roof lights? Part for tuning. Oh, I'm guessing that's for a car. And a pipe wrench. Here we go. Right, that's one thing off our list. But yeah, like I said, they're not exactly rare. Now then, if I remember, there's nothing in this one. Yeah, nothing there. Ooh, don't want to stay there, though. With that zombie on the window. This one's locked. Oh, mama! And to think we were so close to a generator. Look at this. We were here. We were... We were there looking for a generator and it's just over here. Get in. Oh my God, sweet Jesus Santa Maria. Come on in. Join the party. We are celebrating with jam. Lots and lots of jam. Right, hold on. Let me just put my crowbar away. Whew. Well, I expected this 
to be a lot more of a fight after last episode, but here we go. So, oh, I love it. I'm so, I'm so happy. Yeah. Now then, I just need to make it to my car because I'm not going to be able to carry that thing all the way to the car. So, if I just look at my map, the car is essentially just a block over, so we shouldn't have too much issue with that. Cool. Let's go. We'll take a quick shortcut through the gardens. Oh, yeah. I gotta just check how's my wound doing. It's fine. It's, it's not dirty yet so it's fine shouldn't have too much issue with that and there is our car oh i love my fire rescue engine let's go boy oh this is all going so well right let's park you up there we go right let's pick you up let's take the generator and quickly plop it into the trunk there we go don't forget to close it we don't want anything falling out and let's get out of here. Let's go back home. And we've made it. We are home. Ah, good to be home. Right, let's begin right away. Now, in order to connect your generator, you of course need to get the generator, which is in here. So take the generator. Hold on. Do I hear a zombie? I heard a zombie. I don't want to get caught with a generator in my hands while there is a zombie around. Let me just quickly check the premises. Uh, it seems to be fine. Oh, there it is. Look at him strolling around. Hey, buddy, I'm sorry, but the conversion therapy is not open just yet, so I'm gonna need you to, like... Now then, where were we? Ah, yes, the generator. So if we just take that. Now, you want to make sure to have it anywhere around your house. And it has to be on the outside. Do not put it on the inside, otherwise you're going to be pretty much suffocated by the fumes. So you just find a spot where you want to place it. You just drop it. There we go. I'll keep mine there because it's nice in the corner and tucked away. And then you just connect the generator. It will connect to your house. You will see that it's connected because it will say disconnect instead of connect. And then of course, you're going to need some fuel. Now, in order to actually connect it, I'm pretty sure you need to find yourself the how to use generator magazine. Otherwise, you won't uh, be able to connect it. So there is our one. We've already read it. We found it in the last episode. So if you aren't seeing the option to connect the generator, that's probably why. Make sure to have that on you and make sure you have read it. Now then, obviously we need some fuel, which we have. So we're going to grab one gas can and I can see that we need to eat as well. So we're just going to dig into this cereal. Just going to have a little bit of a snack. Eat half of it. There we go. That's looking better. Well fed. Right, let's add some fuel from the gas canister. There we go. One gas canister is usually enough. It fills it up to, what was it, 80%? Yep, yeah, 80%. And I'm not an expert on generators at the moment, but I'm pretty sure 80% will keep you pretty well off for, for definitely over a week. It does all depend how much power you're actually using. So I do recommend turning all of the lights off and only turning them on when you're actually in that specific room and you do need the light on. But if you don't have to have uh, non-necessities draining power, then definitely don't. The only things that should be draining power in your uh, in your house are the fridge, the freezer. Essentially, that's really it. If there is a light that you cannot find, it's probably one of these outside lights. So make sure to turn them off. Otherwise, they're going to be draining power without you even knowing. And if there is still something draining power, remember to check the back ones as well, because sometimes there's some in the back. And there we go. That's essentially the generator covered. You can turn it on, you can turn it off. I am personally going to keep it off for now because we still have normal electricity going through the entire neighborhood. So I don't essentially need it just yet, but I know that once the electric goes off, I've got the generator hooked up and ready to go. Now, I know there is generator maintenance, but I don't know how to actually do that part so you can use specific items in order to repair the generator it's probably scrap electronics but i'll have to double check that one it'll probably pop up on the text at the bottom of the screen when i find out and you do want to make sure to keep the maintenance up because if you don't then the generator just kind of it, it just explodes it goes boom much like your average person on the toilet after fast food and we don't want that do we we do not want the generator to be making a stinky now the second thing that we're going to be doing now is i am going to show you a very cool trick so you know how i said that you can collect uh 
the water dispensers in order to get some clean water storage for yourself, well, there is actually another way. I still like to have a bunch of water dispensers just in case. However, what you can actually do is implement the pipe wrench, a sink, and some cleverly placed rain collector barrels in order to get an infinite supply of clean drinking water. So, let's get started. First of all, we are going to need some nails and we're going to need some planks. So, we've got the nails and let's grab a few planks. Right, that'll be enough for now. And we've got all of our tools, I believe. Yeah, screwdriver, hammer, saw, we're good. Now, the best way of doing this is to get yourself a sink which has some sort of platform already above it. You can't essentially build a completely fresh one just out in the middle of nowhere if you really need to because you set up somewhere where there is no sink, but you will need to go into a residential area and grab an actual sink in order to do this. So we've got our sink. If you can already see, if I just get myself the pickup option, just so I can count the squares, the sink is three squares away from the edge. So if I go ahead and I go to the second floor, I go into this room, just undo these, open the window. So if I jump on the... Uh, hello? Okay, well, that didn't really work well, did it? <laughs> Well, f <laughs> okay, plan B. So if you do not have a platform there, which apparently I don't, what you are going to do is you're going to build one. So a funny little trick is that you can actually build through the wall as long as there is an open window. So if I select a wooden floor and I just place it there. Huh, this is really not going according to plan. Right, okay, change of plan. No, f sake i didn't want to jump out again i'm losing health let me just quickly eat something just so that i just so that i can start healing eat the yogurt berry eat it eat it i really don't want to have my leg broken right so plan b is me having to do this in a very roundabout way so i need to remove this escape rope first and then if i build the wooden floor oh come on this worked before come on work damn it this is really not going according to plan is it i know this works i know it works because i've done this before come on oh so we uh, okay so it works there well good to know Right, so, essentially, what we've done is if I jump out, we've made a little platform over there. So now, because I need to do it in a very roundabout way, I am just going to build a bunch of platforms all the way around my house until we're at the sink. Now, I could build it this way and down here for the bathroom sinks however there is an issue they are not next to the wall now it is crucial that the sinks you are trying to reach are next to the wall if you have a high enough carpentry level and you can just build it outside then you can just put the sink into the middle of a three by three square but because the rain collector barrels have to be somewhere one block above within a three by three square with the sink being in the middle above the sink it is 100% only possible if the sink is next to a wall or if you've made your own one outside and no you can't just build it above the the sink on the inside because the rain collector barrels do have to be under a clear sky so that when it rains they do actually collect the water All right, so that's our platform done. If I just check the squares, we have established that the sink is one, two, three squares away. So you want to make sure to have one, two, three squares with the sink square being in the middle. So there is the sink and there is our one, two, three spaces. And normally this over here, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, is our sink availability radius with the sink being in the middle. So now that we have that, let's just go grab the materials we need. How many bin bags do we actually have? Do we have any more over here by any chance? Right, we have three more. Let's just have have a quick look see if we've got any more hello lady oh i love your skirt right let's just quickly loot the bin bags like i said before normally it's best to just collect them as you go along because then you can use them at your leisure but <laughs> tee -hee, i am not smart so i'm just gonna have to make do now thankfully we've not actually looted any of these near ones so i can just get them now 
Right, how many do we have? That's eight. It's four bags. There we go, 12. That'll be enough. And if I just grab some more planks. Right, let's get up and let's start building. Normally, if you do have level carpentry six, you could have just made stairs that go up to this platform. But I don't have level carpentry six, so I just had to make it in a bootleg way like this. <laughs> so if I just go on carpentry, then you go on furniture and then you've got your rain collector barrel. You see, you need four planks, four nails, four carpentry and four garbage bags. So four is kind of the magic number here. Later on, once you have carpentry level seven, you are going to be able to just replace these with the better versions. But I find that usually even these are enough. And once you have multiples of them, they, they pretty much get you enough drinking water to last you for a very long time. Uh, yep. Right, let's build the last one and there we go so one of these has 160 units of water so if we go downstairs now actually we need to go and grab our pipe wrench first pipe wrench pipe wrench aha so if i just grab that now essentially the way it should be is that our sink is here on this square this is our sink radius this little three by three square here and the barrels should be in this one this one and this one so they are within the three square block radius so all you do is right click plum chrome sink your character will get to work and it should essentially have connected this sink to the three barrels which are up there however we won't be able to see it just yet because obviously our sink is still connected to the actual pipes and we still have unlimited water so once that water runs out so once that water runs out it's going to switch to those three barrels which all together should have uh let's see maths 480 units of water so once it rains they'll fill up and you'll have free 480 units of water to drink and wash and do whatever you want with you are welcome and then you can have all of your other rain collector barrels outside next to your farming area which you can use the tainted water on so now essentially all we have to do is wait for the rain to begin these will fill up and uh, ta-da free drinking water you can see how this can get overpowered if you grab a sink and you just place it in the middle like here for example like just in the middle of here you could then make stairs with a platform all around here and you can just fill all of those squares with the carpentry level 7 rain barrels then you can plumb them all at once and that means that you will have nine barrels worth of water every single time it rains now that is amazing so definitely use and abuse this technique because it is so so useful now as we were speaking about farming that is what we are going to do next so let's just put the wrench away let's grab ourselves a disinfectant because we don't actually have one do we How's our hand doing? Our hand's doing fine. So, for gardening, let's go ahead and grab ourselves the supplies that we need. So, we're gonna need. Wait, where is it? Oh, I already have it. Right, there is the trouble. We've got the rake. Let's grab the seeds. And, uh, oh, I forgot we never managed to find the water canister, did we? I wonder if I can put water in the gas can. I'm gonna try it. Let's have a, let's have a try. Because I'm gonna need some water container and, uh, because I'm gonna need some water container. No, I'm not gonna be able to. Well, that's a, that's a shame. But, eh, that's all right. Let's just, let's just put it back. Right then, gardening. We need to grow our own food. How do we do it? So first of all, you want to make sure to have a rake or a trouble in your inventory. I'm pretty sure both of them will work. And then you want to click dig furrow. Now, the way you want to do it is you want to do one and then you want to leave one space and do another one. Then rinse and repeat for about three times. If you want a bigger garden, obviously do it a few more times. The safest way to do this, and it's not the best looking but it is the safest is to always leave one space between the plants now the reason for this is that your plants can actually get sick and uh, we don't really have a way of treating them right now and if one of your plants gets sick then anything that's right next to it will it will spread onto them so if you have a massive field that is all connected and one of your plants gets sick in the middle it will just spread like the plague and then all of your plants that you've been trying so hard to grow will just uh they'll all just die they'll become useless so 
This is the safest way to do it. Leave one space between each plot so that if any of the plants do actually become sick, you don't lose any of the other ones that you're growing at the moment. Right, so we have our furrows. What now? Well, now, oh yeah, while digging, you will also sometimes find worms along with some other things. You can use these for fishing. However, I've never actually done fishing in this game, so I'm not going to be able, able to help with that regard. But I, I do know that you can use worms for fishing. So uh, yeah, good luck figuring that one out. Now then, let's just unequip this for a second. And uh, let's have a look. What should we grow? Each of the fruits and vegetables has their their own growing time period. So some take longer, some take shorter. I'm not sure which one is which, but I'll look it up and you should see it around now in the text at the bottom of the screen. But for now, let's uh, let's grow some tomatoes. So let's open the packet. Then all you need to do is right click, sow seed and tomato. Then you do the same for this one, that one as well, this one, and one more. For a second one, let's grow some broccoli. Let's put some broccoli over here. And then for our last one, since we have two vegetables, let's do some strawberries. Might as well get some uh, snacky fruit and throw it in the mix. And I just want to say this, whoever says... Oh! Oh! Helicopter! Right, quick, quick! Right, I don't want to be seen by the helicopter. If you hear that, immediately run inside. If you hear the helicopter, go inside and just find a windowless room to sit in. Because the helicopter will screw you up. I'm gonna be honest, I really didn't expect the helicopter to be appearing this episode. So, that, that, <laughs> that's fun. Oh, 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 you saw the lights. Did you see the lights? It's flying around. Yeah, I can hear it flying around and uh, looking for us. It's looking for any survivors. So the helicopter event is essentially, I don't know the lore behind it, not accurate one, but I assume it's like a news or a military helicopter that's looking for any survivors within the exclusion zone. And if it sees you, it's just going to follow you through pretty much the whole day. Now, the problem with that is that the helicopter is loud as fuck, bro. And that means that as soon as you know, it gets to following you and it doesn't leave you alone. It's going to pretty much get all of the zombies in the area and it's going to make them just gravitate towards your location. But this way, if it doesn't see you, it's just going to kind of fly around. It's going to make the zombies move around. So it's going to disturb your zombie cleared and the zombie populated areas. It's going to make them move everywhere. But at least they're not going to be on you. And you know that you have successfully hidden if it slowly fades away just like that. That means it's slowly going away. Now, this will probably happen a few more times, maybe one or two throughout the day, because obviously it's searching for you or not specifically you, but, you know, a survivor. So keep your ears open because once it goes away, it can essentially come back like it's 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 doing now. <laughs> Did have some other things planned in this episode, but I suppose the rest of it is just going to be us sitting in this closet. Right, I'm just going to wait around until it goes away. And then I'm going to share with you guys my the rest of my farming knowledge. A little later. Oh, oh, guys. Do you hear that? I think the helicopter is gone. Oh, finally. It was circling for hours. Right, let's resume. God, so annoying. <laughs> right, so I don't actually have enough strawberry seeds to fill in this last plot, so I'm just going to put a broccoli there. Okay, now, you've got your seeds planted. You've got them spaced as you want. What now? Well, you got to water them all. Now, I should have probably said this at the beginning, but this is why I would recommend setting up a farm while it's raining. Because once you set up the farm and it starts to rain, it's going to water it all for you. And after it waters it all for you, after it rains, it stays watered for a long time. I have found that while it's raining, did that tree just move? I think I'm just imagining things. I think I'm finally losing it, guys. I'm losing it. I usually find that after it rains, I don't have to water my plants at all because they last until it rains again. And that cycle pretty much continues. So it is smart to just build your farm and plant your fruits and vegetables while it's raining. But since we don't have that luxury at the moment, we're just going to have to do it by hand. So let's just water it with a water bottle. And now that we've got it watered, if we go into info and we click on it, you can see water levels thirsty. So if we water it again, 
and then you see water levels are fine now. If you do have time, then definitely water it to the max level it can go, but because we don't really have that kind of time, I'm just gonna water them to the fine level, and they'll be <laughs> fine. <laughs> God, I'm a comedic genius. And they'll very likely just last until the next time it rains. So let's just quickly do that. Alright, that's all of them watered. Now, a few pro tips. If you have any zombies around your farm, lead them away first before you kill them because zombie blood will very likely disease your plants and you do not want that. And also, if you do want to try and predict when the rain is gonna be there is a really good way to do it and that is to find the emergency broadcast system on one of the radios or walkie talkies if you do find it make sure you remember it the emergency broadcast system is randomized for every single world that you create so it will never be the same and it is very useful because it will give you a one day heads up about all the weather changes that are going to be happening as well as any events such as the helicopter appearing or the water or electricity shutting off so it is definitely a very useful resource to tap into. But I think that's gonna be it from me for today. So yeah guys, if you've enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like. If you would like to see more or catch up with all of my latest videos, make sure to subscribe. And if you do have any tips or tricks of your own, or you would like to correct something within my video, then definitely leave it in the comments below. Thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you all in the last episode of How to Survive Your First Week. Goodbye. Check me out. Oh! <laughs>